Hello, we are here at Macintosh at the Willow with Oliver Braid, the Creative Learning Manager at Willow Tea Rooms Trust that owns Macintosh at the Willow. And we're going to be looking at afternoon tea, what it means, what it's about, its special history in Glasgow, and the contest that we're going to be offering to students to design their own. So without further ado, we'll get started. So, Oliver. Hello. Welcome. Thank you very much. And a, one of the things that people from anywhere outside the UK would think is afternoon tea is obviously a cup of tea you drink in the afternoon, but that's not really the case here, is it? There are so many other things British people mean by tea. Um, yeah, so since the Victorian period, so since uh, the 1800s, or mid 1800s, we've had something called the afternoon tea. Uh, and we've got an example of the afternoon tea here. It's served in all across Britain. Um, but here at the Willow Tea Rooms, we serve it every day. Um, so we've got normal tea, which would just be like a cup of tea. And then we've got afternoon tea which normally will be tea served with maybe some savouries and some scones and some cakes. And people in Scotland still also refer to their dinner in the evening as their tea. Yeah, and the um, in England, where I'm from as well, uh, we also right. say, like, what are you having for your tea tonight? Uh -huh. And so in that context, tea means dinner, like a main <laughs> meal. So it definitely doesn't just mean a cup of tea. Great, thank you. So we have here an example of a Macintosh Willow afternoon tea for mm -hmm. one with lots of treats. Can you talk us through what we've got here? Sure, so um, Macintosh at the Willow, we change our afternoon teas quite a lot. Uh -huh. um, we used to do a variety where we would present either a classic or a theme tea. Um, or a seasonal tea. Today, what we've got is a kind of classic okay. afternoon tea uh, with some additional extras. Okay. So um, traditionally, the first layer mm -hmm. is always kind of savoury snacks. And this comes from the original, again, the Victorian invention where the Duchess of Bedford, uh -huh. uh, in, who invented the afternoon tea, was credited with inventing the afternoon tea, she would order to her room a plate of bread and butter, a plate of cake, and a cup of tea. So kind of developing on that, we've got this savoury layer. So today we have sandwiches and we have sausage rolls, but I've got the menu here as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll just talk us through it. So we've got the pastrami, pickle, mm -hmm. and English mustard on a pretzel bun. Wow. We've got the west coast of Scotland salmon with a lemon and dill cream cheese. We've got smoked apple wood and tomato chutney. So that's actually kind of like a vegan inclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've got the egg mayo on rocket inside a little or a petit croissant. Mm -hmm. And then we've got these warm savouries as well. So in our afternoon tea, you actually get an extra plate, which is really special. Very and on here we have this kind of classic Scottish haggis bonbon. Mm. Uh, and then we have the traditional Scottish roll. So that's our savoury layer. And so I think normally people would eat that left first. Uh -huh. And then we've got this mid layer. And it's quite interesting. We've got two different types of sweet thing here. So I'm just going to move this jam and you'll uh -huh. see that we've got a shortbread biscuit uh -huh. and we've got a scone. We've got two scones. And the scones come with the jam and with the clotted cream. So original Victorian afternoon teas, when they developed, they were served with biscuits. Right. And then as the railway improved and as refrigeration improved, we were able to bring scones onto the afternoon tea menu. So this is kind of more of an Edwardian edition. Uh -huh. So early 1900s, um, scones with cream and scones with cream and jam had um, been served separately in the south of Britain in Devon and Cornwall uh -huh. as what was known as a cream tea. And in late Victorian times, lots of people, as you probably know, were going to the seaside, holidays became a big thing. And so they were going to these southern parts of Britain and having scones 
are served with jam and cream, they bring that back and then soon it becomes added onto the menu. So I'm sure probably most people watching know what jam is, they'll know what a biscuit is. I'm assuming people will know what a scone is. It's kind of like a, a slightly sweet but very dense bun and we'll, I guess we'll cut it open in a little bit so yeah. that people can see. And then clotted cream. Um, this is why refrigeration and the improvement of refrigeration was important because it's made particularly in Devon and Cornwall normally. It's a very, very thick cream. Often it will come with a crust on the top of it. So it's, it's almost kind of nutty. Mm. It's very, very thick. And again, we'll have a look at that and how to put that on. Great. Depending on whether you're from Devon or Cornwall or whether you go, there is a debate about whether you put the cream on the scone first or whether you put the jam on the scone. And then finally on the top here, we've got our selection of kind of luxury mini cakes. Uh -huh. uh, this is a staple for the afternoon tea. And again, Macintosh at the Willow, we change our cakes uh, quite regularly. These ones today off the menu, we have got the lemon macaroon with a raspberry and white chocolate ganache. Beautiful. Just here, lovely colors. Then we've got the salted caramel brownie entremet. Then we've got the carrot cake, which is topped with crystallized ginger. And then we've got this lovely little caramel and banana tart just there. Beautiful. So you've got a three course meal all yeah. in one package and it would better be a luxurious thing that you have occasionally because it's a lot of food. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of food. Um, I suppose quite often nowadays it is more of a special treat. Mm. Um, we talked about the Duchess of Bedford. I think she went through a big stage of having it every day to like yeah. cheer her up during this kind of bleak afternoon time between right. meals. Um, yeah, nowadays we find that people treat it much more as a sort of special occasion. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. So you said afternoon tea is one of the big things people buy here, but mm. afternoon tea is just really a big thing in Glasgow at the moment generally. What do you think has made it so popular? I think that um, I guess people have had a hard couple of years and then looking for something that is like a bit of a special treat uh -huh. um, and people want to come out and relax again. And then also I think in general we're aware, right, that people now live their lives slightly based on what they can photograph and what they can put on social yeah. media, particularly Instagram. So we do get people who come in and maybe after their tea is served, they won't touch anything for a long time because they're actually photographing themselves with the tea. Uh -huh. So the presentation is really important, mm. uh, both for us and for the people who are kind of purchasing the product. Um, and I, I touched on earlier, I guess we have this added um, attraction at Macintosh at the Willow with our afternoon teas in that they change on a rotation. Uh -huh. So we've got this real classic example here. Um, we used to do some very special themes, so we've done like a Wizard of Oz theme, an Alice in Wonderland theme, so again, really playing into the Instagrammable nature of that kind of food. Mm -hmm. um, these were particularly popular just after lockdown when people were coming out and looking for something really exciting, and particularly something for the family, so yeah. these kind of fun afternoon tea themes, really bring that in. Um, our more traditional look, or the kind of classic afternoon tea, this is more popular with older people um, and particularly older locals who remember going for an afternoon tea when they were young in Glasgow. Some people who come here can still remember coming to these tea rooms to have a traditional afternoon tea, so it's like a walk down memory lane. Um, and then more recently we've been doing a combination of the kind of themed tea and the classic in the shape of a seasonal tea. So this is classic, but with a theme rolled into it. And that also brings back kind of repeat customers, particularly international audiences as well. Often when they come, they really want more of a kind of a classic feeling of an afternoon tea. Yeah. And with all these different um, types of teas you guys have tried out, are there any lessons you've learned that would be useful or people designing their own afternoon tea? I think we have found that the themed teas, which so 
I love them because they look really fun, the cakes are really special, um, but they actually aren't as popular as a classic or a seasonal. So I think going forward, what we're looking at doing is more of a rotation between the classic and the seasonal and less of the fun theme. Although I would still be really open to seeing if somebody wanted to design a really fun themed afternoon tea. Mm -hmm. I think there's still, there's a lot of space for imagination. I think in general, because there's so many courses and, and it's quite a visual sensory thing, uh -huh. I think for chefs and for people producing food, this is like a dream situation because you can experiment with like the look and the palette um, across savoury and sweet options. Lots of right. scope for creativity and tastiness and for yeah. people to experiment. Yeah, definitely. Great. Thank you so much. So we've talked about how uh, Kate Cranston developed this space in her businesses, but here we are much later and we've got Willow Tea Rooms Trust that you work for and Macintosh of the Willow that we're sitting in. Can you tell us about those organizations and what they do? Sure. So, um, as you said, Riley, this building first opened 120 years ago in 1903. It was the last of Kate Cranston's tea rooms. Um, then she actually sold it in 1919. It became a restaurant and it became a department store. In the mid-1980s, it was... Uh, empty and then taken over again by a jewellery business which ran here until about 2013 and then the business closed completely. So in 2014 um, a businesswoman from the city, Celia Sinclair, uh, who was a Macintosh fan, mm -hmm. saw that this building was empty and she purchased the entire building to stop the original Macintosh work from being distributed into private collections. So mm. she saved this building for the city. Uh -huh. And then between 2014 and 2018, she worked with artists and designers and academics from the university to recreate the tea rooms to look identical to how they looked when it first opened in 1903. Celia formed a trust, the Willow mm. Tea Rooms Trust, and I work for the trust. Mm. And a part of the trust or an arm of the trust is a social enterprise based in the tea rooms, which is now called Macintosh at the Willow. And so we run the entire building as um, a tea rooms. Mm -hmm. There's also an education department, which is what I run. Mm -hmm. um, there is hireable spaces, and we have a shop, and we have a visitor centre with a museum all about the history of Kate Cranston, Charles Rennie Macintosh, and the history of tea in Glasgow. Um, yeah, and I think we can do about 200 covers at a time in the space. So really busy and a lot of our biggest trade is people coming for the afternoon tea. Lovely. So we just want to thank Oliver for sharing all this wonderful knowledge Thanks. with us and thank the kitchen for producing this amazing afternoon tea that we're going to test out and the whole Macintosh of the Willow and Willow Tea Rooms Trust for sharing this with us. Um, Sabrina, thanks for coming and thanks for offering us the opportunity to show our afternoon tea and I think there's a competition um, for students maybe you can introduce for us now. Yes, so for students who would like to use the inspiration we hope you've just had, um, for cooking students or bakery students we would love to get your take on what afternoon tea could be. As we've discussed, there's loads of scope for creativity. You would just need to provide the three different courses, give us your recipes and pictures. Uh, for hospitality service students, you could design how you're going to present and deliver it. It could even be an event that you're designing it mm -hmm. around. And for tourism or marketing, even ambitious English students, you can produce a video of up to five minutes talking about afternoon tea to promote it to an international audience. Mm. And we'll give you details separately of how to submit that. And the successful winner will get a caddy of special tea mm -hmm. and also feature on the Willow Tea Rooms Trust social media. So thanks for that and good luck.